sensitive yeah. pants, so. <laughs> I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm hot. Ah. If I went for a few mile run, it would be better. I'm more worried about this part than I am Tuesday. Tuesday's going to go okay. It's going to go fine. It's going to go fine, yes. Well, there's a few people gathering their stuff, but yeah, go ahead. And the mic I checked, so. It works? Yeah. It's a delay. It's a delay on. Good morning. Let's get started. I know some people are still gathering. Thanks for coming in. All right, drop in. Troy. Troy Ball. We're going to have this song for you. Your choice. Lynn will come with you. All right, so uh, good morning. Appreciate y'all coming out. I know this isn't uh, the most exciting thing that we do every year, but it is very important. For those who are new, um, we have. It's actually a great opportunity for the kids to do the ACT because they're not paid for it, uh, at least the portions that we get them here. So um, we have to be trained on it, and that is important, and so that's what we're doing today. Um, there are a couple of changes, a little bit, nothing too major, but um, for those that have done this a million times, or four or five, or however many we've done this, um, if you could still pay close attention, obviously, because um, the training is important, and there are a few And here you go. Maybe. All right. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Brent, are we good with microphones and everything? Okay, for anybody that's gone today, Jim asked me to record this, which I was so super excited about, um, so that then they could watch it. Um, as you came in, all of you should have signed the role, and you have an individual sheet to pick up that has your assignment on it. Some of you may wonder why I wrote part-time PM only on your assignment. It's just so I knew every faculty member's role, so there's a couple of you that don't have anything, but you know what you are because you're part-time. Um, I'm gonna try to make this as fun as I can. How fun can ACT training be? But I've got a couple of things to try to make it fun. And um, please ask me questions that you have so that we can make Tuesday run as smooth as possible. If you haven't seen already, out in the hallways for students, is a table in front of the attendance office with extra ACT prep books and up on the commons area windows and the library windows um, they have their room assignments so to make it so students don't come in first thing in the morning on Tuesday and not know their room if you want to mention to your students make sure they check those windows to know their room assignments and they've been up for a day or so already all right so before I get started, I want six really brave volunteers who are not as scared to get up in front of all of us. Jump up. Fletcher, has somebody volunteered you? Okay, go meet Mr. Blodgett in the back room. James, or Freeland, go ahead and do it. Gina, will you go back to John? I'm going to volunteer you. Pierce, awesome. Um, who else is brave out here, I know? Randy, go back. You have theatrical skills. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three, four. Uh, Randall, I can't, uh, sorry. And then Sterling, I'm going to volunteer you. <laughs> Nobody else is brave enough. Is that six, John? Trust me, I have candy for you to be able to be brave. All right. So I'm going to ask those guys to do something in just a minute that I thought we could have a little bit of fun with. But I have to go over a few things on um, the ACT training. So we're going to overview the ACT. Um, we're going to go over all of your staff responsibilities. And then we'll go over test day activities. You should have gotten one of three assignments. You're either going to be a test room supervisor, which has the most responsibilities, a test proctor, which is a backup supervisor, and or the roving um, proctors where you'll have an assignment out in the hall. And then some of those roving proctors I assign to either do AM distribution, where you're going to come in here in the tech atrium with the other counselors and we're going to help distribute bins. I have five of you doing that, so that means 10 stations, so hopefully we'll be able to pick up and get bins out to you, count it appropriately and get them out to you really quickly, so you're not waiting to be able to go to your testing room. Also, I gave some of those roving proctors PM um, collection, where they're going to come back here to the tech atrium from their roving spot, and they're going to help us collect those materials, again, count and everything. So John, give those guys two minutes, and then I'm going to have them come in. 
All right, so if you have one of those, you have one of those three assignments. Um, just a little bit of a disclaimer there. We really looked at plan assignments and last year's assignments to hopefully not give you the same one. If you got the same one, I apologize. We do the best we can and we'll try to mix it up even more in future years, okay? All right, you guys all know this is a real ACT. It's the same ACT that is equivalent to what's given on any of the national test dates. We just have the opportunity to give it to all of our students here. Um, parents and students really appreciate this opportunity and so I'm glad to have all of your help so we can do it. I went over all of your test personnel already. Those of you that are room supervisors, you got a manual, okay? I don't have enough copies of these to give you this now and to have you bring it back um, and to not bring it back on test day. So you're, you have your manual now. You're to review it, share it with your proctor, and then make sure you have it on test day because there will not be one in your bin. I ran out with just giving you all one now. Okay, let's bring our brave volunteers in. We're going to start off with this fun um, example of what may go on in an ACT. This is your pretend classroom up here. It's 7 in the morning, I know, but let's see if we can have a few little laughs. So what I asked these guys to do was to pretend a few things that they may do as they come into ACT. Time is yours. There are assigned seats. Okay. Why are you sitting by your friend? That's me. I'm the only one you have. So it's <laughs> are you in charge of giving seats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had mics on all of them because they're saying some funny stuff. Am I supposed to be here? You're supposed to be here. Did yeah, you bring a pencil? Yeah, but I, didn't, I don't have ID. Oh no, but you got it. I know, but I don't know but you. Uh-huh. Can you run down to the attendance office real quick? And you have to get your ID. Hurry, hurry, run. Really? Uh, now? Uh-huh. Go, go, go. But I don't want to miss but, the test. But we're gonna start the test real soon. But I don't want to miss it. I know, you're not gonna miss it. If you can get back here by 745, I won't lock the door. Run now, because I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Any other offenders? Can I go to the bathroom? Can you hold it? No. Okay, you're going to lose time on your test. All right. <laughs> it's about time here. You're late. <laughs> We've already I'm passed out. 7.25? 7.25? Oh, no, you're late. You're going to have to go sit in the cafeteria with Coach Barnes all day. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah, really. <laughs> Okay, you guys, there's lots of funny things that happen. You guys are awesome. Come grab a piece of candy for being willing to be my pretend students this morning. I gave them a list of possible things they could do, like bringing a backpack when they weren't supposed to, but none of them had that prop. Um, not bringing ID. Do you want candy? Sure. Oh. <laughs> um, Asking to go to the restroom, sitting by their friends instead of picking their, instead of getting assigned their seats. And I should have assigned one, somebody at the door rather than me. But there's, there's going to be kids that do things that we don't expect. Um, but we handle them the best that we can. A few of those things, we are going to allow backpacks in the room. We should have grabbed your backpack as a prop. So student comes in with a backpack. Wow, that's really heavy. Um, <laughs> and um, they do not have to go find some unknown locker that they don't know exists and that they don't know the combo to, okay? They can bring them in the classroom. You as the test room supervisor, have them line them up against the wall. Don't let them in them during test. If they have a cell phone, you're gonna collect it and take it from them. Put it in your testing bin, turned off until after testing, okay? But don't send all the kids away just because they have a backpack with them. Line them up on the back of the classroom where they can't have access to them. Um, but don't ship them anywhere else. If students come in late and my door is still open and I have not yet handed out test booklets, that means they can be in their assigned seats, they can have their pencils, they can have their answer documents. I can even have started reading the instructions until I get to that point that says, pass out test booklets. Anybody can still walk into your classroom. 
So as a room supervisor and as a proctor, you're not going to lock that door until the proctor reading says, I now I'm now passing out test booklets. Okay, That's going to approximately be at 745. We've told all the kids to come at 730. So they know that they're all supposed to be here at that time. That's when you're going to be checking ID and assigning seats, um, getting students all into your classroom. And approximately 745 is going to be the official start time of that test. I'd really like to not have any classroom doors locked before 745. So we allow those kids to have an opportunity to still come in and test. Anybody who comes to your room after the door is locked, you're gonna, they're going to get sent down to the cafeteria, like I told Coach Pierce. And I really don't think Coach Barnes is the one that's sitting in the cafeteria with them, so I just grabbed a name. All right, so you have your, your um, supervisor's manual. Um, all of the same uniform procedures in every classroom and verbal instructions verbatim. You guys know this. Seating in your classroom. You have to assign the students their seats. Don't let them come in and sit by their friends. You also have to record where your students are sitting on your seating chart. You guys know this, but um, make sure that there's the proper seating arrangements. It has to be three feet between every student. Okay? Um, so we've emailed all of you whose room is going to be used for testing. If you can help your fellow proctor out and have your room set up, that would be awesome. If not, you guys, when you get your bins in the morning, you're going to go in and just make sure your room is, is appropriately set up. Desks should all be facing one way, three feet apart, so that students can, can come right in and have a good testing environment. Bulletin boards in the classroom. So those of you that have anything on your walls in your classroom that might help students on the test, like writing grammar rules or formulas in math, um, any of those things need to be covered or taken down. You can leave up a periodic table still and a few things, um, geological maps, but anything that's going to give them um, extra help on the ACT, you need to take down. You all will have, do you have a question? Um, Katie, she was not here today, I should have introduced her. Katie Jex, our awesome testing coordinator, emailed everybody yesterday or day before yesterday if your room was going to be used. So if you have an email from Katie, and basically if your room is upstairs in this side of the building, English, social studies, science, math, you're going to be used. Okay? And then some special ed rooms downstairs. Um, sure, yeah, I'll have her re-email those, absolutely. Maybe I can hack into her email. She's not here today. <laughs> um, but I know she sent those out and I can resend. Is there a question in the back? Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you had a little one helping raise your hand. All right. I, I will give her a piece of candy. It's early in the morning. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So in your bin with supplies and timepieces, um, one note on this. You cannot use your cell phone or your iPad as your other timepiece. So, timepieces in the room, you have your clock and you have a stopwatch um, timer, okay? So you guys don't use, even though your cell phone might be easier to use than that little timer that you have to read the instructions on, you can't use your cell phone as your timepiece. Okay. You guys will come in the morning here. We'll do a quick briefing to answer any other questions and tell you anything that I forgot to tell you today. Um, that Mike reminds me about or any of those things. And then you will pick up your bins and go directly to your room. You can go into your room and leave the door locked, get everything set up, and not admit students until you're ready for them. Um, make sure all your materials are secure. So if you have your bin with your test booklets and materials, take them back to the teacher's desk or as far away from the door as possible as you're getting your room set up. Um, keep them away from student access and away from the door until they're distributed. Um, when you, you guys decide amongst yourselves with the proctor and the room supervisor who's going to check IDs, who's going to direct to seats, but make sure that you direct students to the seat they're supposed to sit in. Um, never let them choose their own seat. After you've locked your door and after you have handed out test booklets, you know that you're not to admit any late arriving students. Like I said, approximately a 7.45 start time. Now, as far as ID goes, ID requirements, um, they have to have an official photo ID. 
driver's license, school ID, they can go to the attendance office and have us print them an ID. I would prefer us not to do too much of that. The students have been notified three, four times and their parents as well that they're supposed to bring ID. Um, personal recognition, this is how this goes. So I pretended like I didn't know Mr. Fletcher. Um, there might be students in your room that you don't know um, and most likely that will be the case. If a staff member recognizes that student, then you have to put that staff member's initials by their name on their role. So if I didn't recognize Mr. Fletcher, but Mr. Price, he knew Mr. Fletcher was coming in, then he could say, I know this person, and I am going to vouch for them by recognition. I'm going to write an R for recognition. He's saying, I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, they spend lots of quality time together coaching, I'm sure. So um, then you're going to say, I initial that I know them, and it's going to be your initials, not the room proctor, the person who actually recognized them face to face with that staff initials. So this is what your roster is going to look like. You're going to have one of these in your bin, and you will go through as students come in. They'll be in alphabetical order, and you'll, um, you'll write next to it the type of ID they had as they check in. Okay, so P for photo ID, L for the ACT student letter, um, R for student recognition. Okay, if your students are sitting like this, Oh, my pointer's not going to work. Um, so after students are seated, and only when prompted with your, visual, with your verbal instructions, then you individually present the student with their testing booklet. Um, so here's an example how they need to go in sequential serial number order. And they'll come to you that way. I'm going to go through and sort all of those so that your 25 test booklets are all already in serial number order. But you need to make sure you give them to students sequentially in the pattern like this. If you start at the back and then walk to the front and then to the back again. Questions on that? Okay. And then you have to complete this seating diagram. So you have a roster you have to complete and get back to us. You have a seating diagram that you have to complete and get back to us. So your seating diagram is going to have that serial number on it that you gave the test, the student that test. And then you fill it out as to where they're sitting in your room. Um, most of us are going to have standard desks. I don't think we're testing too many with tables except in one accommodated special ed room. Um, and so you can mark what kind of desk and things we have, distance between students, and then those test book serial numbers. Attentiveness during the test. You're only to read the supervisor's manual. You're supposed to walk around the room, discourage all those um, inappropriate behaviors, and answer questions. Um, they specifically ask us to remind all staff that you cannot grade papers, read books, talk, or use a computer or a cell phone. In another part of the training, it actually says, I'm supposed to tell you that you're supposed to turn your cell phones off when you go into the testing room, just so that they don't by chance vibrate or go off while you're testing if they distract a student. Okay. We're going to begin long before 9 a.m., but the, the state testing standards for ACT is that we must begin before 9 a.m. Um, what they refer to general announcements as is things like when you're um, to tell them where the pencil sharpener is or that you will allow them a break between test two and three, um, but that those general announcements can be things that you think the student needs to know um, but is not per pertinent to the verbal instructions right in the test. And then make sure you read those absolutely correct verbal instructions in there. We're doing ACT no writing. Thank goodness we don't need to add another half hour, hour onto our test. We're doing test one and two, then a 15 minute break, test three and four. Um, if we start at 745, all the other students are arriving at 1130 and we're hoping we'll be all done by that point as well. So that you would have got through all your portions and let the students go have lunch at 1130. You guys have seen the bell schedule posted online? Or not yet? Okay. So I did not put that in your, um, in your packets today, but it's posted right up on the website. Brent has that up for us, and Mark also has the new one under bell schedules. So you can find that um, there. It'll be a short and four-period day. Um, the lunch goes from 11.30 to 12.15-ish, and then class starts at that point. Jessica. They are allowed out of the classroom because they can go use the restroom. They could go get a drink. Um, the roving proctors at that point um, need to make sure the halls stay 
stay quiet so that they're not a distraction to everyone else. You don't have to let your whole class out at the same time, um, but they do need to have a chance to be able to go out and use the restroom. Um, they technically can have a drink and a snack if they brought their own during that 15 minutes, but their break only needs to be, only can be 15 minutes. Okay, cannot exceed that. Okay, exact timing of test. So in, there's no standardized testing timing where we get on the intercom and say, everybody start test two. You guys are all doing that in your individual rooms. So <coughs> you've got your two time pieces. The proctor is going to be responsible for watching one of the time pieces, and the room supervisor is, is watching the other. Um, <coughs> you record the time in your supervisor's manual as well as um, then transfer it to your time record page. And that's the third thing you have to turn back into us at the end of testing. So you have your roster, you have your seating assignment, and a time recording page that you will do that time verification form. Um, remember to give the five minute warning. What can you write up on the board during testing about timing? Very good. Start and end time, and then make sure you give the verbal war warning of the five minutes. Sometimes um, they suggested in the manual that if you write the five minute time, sometimes students have read that and thought that was their end time. So write start and stop time on the board, and then give a five minute verbal warning time. Okay, um, and and make sure that that's accurate there. So this is the in there in the manual. You'll actually record the time there. You can double check the timing chart so that you have the minutes all calculated correctly, which I know you guys all will. And then transfer that material to the time verification form. And then make sure you double check your timing before you dismiss the students because that can be a common irregularity that we'd have to call ACT about. So double check it before dismissing your students. Okay, all of you will have a calculator notice as well, and the students have received this, and it's also up on our website. So the list of prohibited calculators um, are there. Students are responsible for making sure they bring their own approved calculator, okay? Um, so they know that they've, and they've been told that. Um, they can't share, use only one calculator. Um, don't, you as a staff member, don't um, clear their calculators, and if they have um, the calculator, they only use it during test number two. There's our break information. We talked about that already. Um, 10 to 15 minutes after test two, um, students need to be reminded to be quiet, no cell phone usage. Um, somebody has to stay in the room at all times, and then another staff member can go out into the halls with them. And then we have to file an irregularity report if the break's too long or too short. So try to keep it right at that 15 minutes. Um, irregularity reports, hopefully we won't have too many of these, but it seems like we usually do. If you have questions on an irregularity or a problem in your classroom, um, Mike and I will both have our walkies. And you can call down to the office and one of the secretaries, either counseling or attendance or main office, can radio us and get that question answered. So hopefully you won't have to feel like you're you're alone in any of those questions. I'll send Mike to answer all the hard ones. <laughs> yes? So if they have a cell phone during the break, what happens? They are not to have access to their cell phone during the break at all. So if they have a cell phone on their person when they come into the test room, you need to have them power it off. You need to take it and put it in your test bin, those lovely little brown totes, and leave it there until the end of the test. And if they didn't give you that before and they use it during their, during their test, they may get dismissed and they may have their, have their score canceled. They'll have to read specifically what the consequence is for it, but they absolutely can't have their cell phone during the break. Okay, if they went and got in their backpack, the backpack that was too heavy for me to move, if it's along the wall and they needed to go get a water bottle out of their backpack or a quick and roll bar, they can do that, but just monitor to make sure they're not getting on a cell phone or use an iPod or something. Keep that kid, and um, and we'll find out what we have to do with them. Yep. If you see them, oh, absolutely. That's good for our video people. So the question was, um, what do I do if I'm a rover out in the hall and I see a kid walk out of the bathroom with their cell phone? Um, that can endanger the security of our ACT test. Um, and so we need to make sure that if that happens, that you keep that kid with you, um, get a hold of one of us, and we'll find out what we need to do. 
Um, the other question prior to that was if a student is using a cell phone, same kind of thing, if they're using it over the break, they're not allowed to use their cell phone, iPod, any electronic device other than their calculator at all. Their break is just so that they can stretch and go to the bathroom and get a drink and you know, have just a little bit of a mental break for a second, but not to get on their phones at all. Um, there may be some cases of irregularities and there's ways we'll handle things like illness of a student. Last year during AP testing, we had a student throw up in the middle of testing. <laughs> so if there's things like that that happen, let us know. Hopefully we won't have to have any of those things go down. <laughs> it might have been. Or it might have been me. <laughs> there you go. So, of course, we have to document all of our irregularities. Um, prohibited behaviors. Okay. The way the ACT says this is that if you assume that they've done an, a prohibited behavior but you didn't observe it, you give them a warning and then you watch for it. If you've seen them do it, no warning, you can tell them that. Um, you can escort them nicely out of the classroom and tell them that their test is going to be not scored and they're done testing. So I've had this happen to me as I've been proctoring too. I called stop, student hurries and still bubbles in the last few and I watch him do it. Um, so I have to go escort him quietly out to the hall and tell him that he's done testing. Um, we don't want to have that happen to any of our kids. But if they go on to a previous section, so they're in math and they're working on, on English, they can't do that. If they mark bubbles after the time is called, if they have a calculator issue, if they use cell phones or electronic devices, if they're giving any or receiving any help, their disturbance, um, you're going to dismiss the student, you're going to inform them what they did, and then you're going to report it to Mike or I and let us know, and we're going to do the attached irregularity report. If there's some kind of security breach, we have to get on the phone and call ACT, so we don't want to have that happen. All right. At the completion of the test, and some people will get done faster than others, just a few minutes is where it'll end up in your own individual timing rooms. You're going to come back here to the tech atrium, and you're going to give us your, your bins for collection. I will have 10-ish stations, 8 to 10 stations, so it shouldn't be a long wait. That means that every single person collecting should only have to check in two or three teachers. So we hope to get you checked in really quickly, and then to be able to go enjoy your lunch after testing. So um, you're going to come back with your bins. We'll go through and count all of the test booklets, have you sign your verification forms, and turn in all of your forms back to us. Um, we need the roster, the test booklet count form, the seating diagram, the time verification form, and then any of those irregularity reports if that applies. Okay. I wrote a couple other things down as I wanted to make sure that we covered. So. We already talked about backpacks. What do we do if a student has a backpack? Who said it? Go ahead. Awesome. You'll get one for having to videotape me. This has been interesting for sure. OK, so line them up in the back of the classroom. They can come in. Don't send them back to their locker, OK? Unless they have time to do that, and that's their choice. But um, some kids got really stressed by trying to find a locker they didn't know existed or didn't have a combo to. Um, what time are we going to start the test? 7.45, OK? And teachers, oh, phones. This is one thing I said I was going to tell you. Cell phones are off, and the classroom phone, please forward it to that teacher's voicemail. So push the button that says forward to voicemail so that then none of the phones in the room will ring. There's a, the, it's the fourth, third or fourth button on the right-hand side that has a little um, envelope and an arrow. And you click that, and then it forwards your phone to voicemail so that then nothing will ring in your, in your classroom. I will. So teachers in your classroom, your cell phones are going to be off. You already know that. The classroom cell phone, you can, uh, sorry, the classroom phone, because classrooms don't have cell phones. The classroom phone it has a button on the bottom row of buttons by transfer and hold and all of that that is an envelope and an arrow. Am I imagining this right? And that's how you forward your phone to voicemail. But it will be less of a distraction if you, can, if you can do that. And then again, if your room is being used, I'll re-email that list if some of you didn't get it. Um, make sure those bulletin boards with formulas or any writing helps must be taken down and that all the desks are facing the same direction. OK, before we finish, I need 10 really brave volunteers. 
Come on. I'm not going to make you act out this time, and I'll just call your names. Come on up. Five on each side of the room. There is candy involved, Brent. Okay, we'll turn this off real quick. Okay, so five on this side, five on this side. I was in the middle. <laughs> there we go. He needs some more sugar. It's Friday morning. There you go. I felt like it's Halloween. Okay, I have five. Okay. Miss <laughs> Rosewood, come on up. Miss Plummer, come on up. Mr. Andrews, come on up. <laughs> Mrs. Ames, come on up. Okay, and I need one more. Mrs. Bradshaw, come on up. You got volunteered. Voluntold. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I know. Okay, so you guys, if you'll stand and line up about right here behind me. And then if you guys land up, line up right here behind me. These are fantastic. I bought them yesterday at the dollar store. I think they're great. So here's the object. She's taller than me. I know, and I'm trying to turn this off so you can read it. Okay, so some of the answers to our questions are up here. And these guys are going to try to beat the other team in hitting the answer with their great big giant fly swatter. Okay, here you go. What time can you begin the test? Go. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We've got some competitive faculty. This is awesome. Okay. Next. Don't admit any students with? Anything. <laughs> Any electronic devices other than a calculator. Awesome. Students can still be admitted into the room until? Oh, there you go. Good. Test booklets are distributed. What should be recorded on the board during the test? Good job. Oh. <laughs> All right. Start and stop time for each section. OK, hold on. You got to have, I got more questions, so stay up with your team. You get another shot. Um, <laughs> test booklets should be handed out in what fashion? Go ahead. Hurry. Sequential serial number order. Okay, next. Give it to, again, maybe you can go up against another person this time. <laughs> Staff members must not. Just smack him. <laughs> Read grade papers, use cell phones, or do anything unrelated to the test. Next person. Students may use a calculator only on which test? There you go. <laughs> Mathematics, test number two. And if a problem occurs or an emergency, what do you do? Call us in the office or the counseling center, <laughs> and somebody will radio a mic or I. And last one? Oh, OK. I, sh I liked you against Brent instead. <laughs> what should you do if the student has a backpack? <laughs> yeah, hit him with this fly swatter. <laughs> uh, last one. There you go. <laughs> Woo! All right. Put it along the wall and so students can't get it by testing. Okay. Thank you guys all. I hope that I'm entertaining a little bit. And these are really fantastic things that I purchased yesterday. Okay. Mike, do you need to tell them anything else? Okay, thank you for coming. Briefing session on Tuesday morning, 7.05 right here. We'll hopefully have you to your classrooms about 7.15 or 7.20 to get the room set up. You'll start admitting students at 7.30. And the test will begin at what time? You are awesome. We couldn't do it without you. Grab a piece of candy if you want one as you go. Thank you all so much. That was fun. Those are awesome, aren't they? Do you want these back in here, Mark? Don't they go back in here? I did. Okay. Thank you for your help.
um, I can't be a supervisor. Because of your like kinda hard to go up and down those stairs. Okay, I didn't think about that. I knew you were out. We'll find someone to switch you. Okay. Um I need to be in a hallway. Yeah. You know what? I may even just have a counselor come switch you. Thank you for telling me. I am sorry I forgot. Anybody wants to borrow these? They are so much fun. <laughs> they are awesome. Where'd you get them? Yeah. The dollar store in oh, South Jordan. Nice. I went to go get regular ones and I saw these and I went, oh, those are just way too much fun. <laughs> I don't think they would work for real flies. <laughs> All right. These are awesome. Yes. If you wanted to use them in your glass, they'd be fun. Kids might hit each other with them, but <laughs> they hopefully wouldn't hurt each other too bad. <laughs> Thanks for letting me use your, your very heavy backpack as an example. Thanks and goodbye. Hopefully that was not too torturous. <laughs>